What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the Scale News Update. If you're not familiar with the show, this is where we talk about the news that happened in the scale world of RC over the last week. This week we've got a handful of good topics to discuss, so let's jump right into them. First topic of the day is a new kit from Tamiya, Tamiya, whatever you want to call it. This is a 1995 Ford Mustang Cobra R. Now I'm even a Mustang fan, at least the more recent Mustangs as well as Fox body Mustangs, big fan. I have to think that that SN95 body style, you know, the 94 to 98, even, you know, from 99 to 04, those were some rough years for the Mustang styling. I, I can't, I, I don't understand the choice of the 1995 Cobra R. I know that that Cobra R was kind of special and all that, but if you're going to do the R, do the 2004 Cobra R that we, you know, there was posters of and they were all red and they looked cool and it had the better wing and it wasn't a 1995 Mustang. <laughs> I did some searching. Now, granted, it's not the Cobra R because obviously I think that it may cost you more to buy this Tamiya model and get it running than it would for you to actually be able to buy a running and driving 1995 Mustang. That was my hypothesis anyway. And I found a couple. I found one runs drives not too far from here. 600 bucks. So depending on the level of electronics and things you get in there, you could you could be getting real close. But at least you could, you know, hide the fact that you owned a 1995 Mustang model. If you owned the actual car, people may see it and then there's the bigger problem. But if you happen to be a young, impressionable adolescent during the time when these cars might have been popular and for some reason you have a soft spot for the 1995 Mustang Cobra R, you can have one. It's coming soon. Probably see this thing hitting retailers close to the holidays, maybe just after the new year. Keep an eye out, I guess, if you're looking for a 1995 Mustang Cobra R. Sticking with a little bit of the on-road theme, Habao has a new HyperX EPX, which is a racing semi. And I always kind of had a little bit of a soft spot for the Tamiya TTO 1E, they had the buggy raw fat fox version and as well as just the regular flat nose semi. This one has got a more of a futuristic looking body on it, but it's still kind of a cool semi truck racer. It's got some very appropriately styled wheels. You can get it three different ways. All of them are almost ready to run. Uh, two of them are pre-painted. One of them is clear. As far as I'm aware, Habao makes a fairly decent racing platform. So this would probably be a much better performing truck as opposed to the Tamiya counterpart that I like so much. This one isn't brand new. It actually came out around a month or so ago, but I actually just ran across it. And again, just have a little bit of a soft spot for these racing semi-inspired models. New this week from Incision is a replacement set of Capra stainless links. The Capra comes with stainless links, but they have cross-drilled holes and they flare a little bit differently, and as well as being a turnbuckle style with counter cut threads on each side. These are a more of a standard style link set. You can replace them if that's the style you're looking for. These will reuse the factory rod ends used in the Axial Capras, which will save you a little bit of money on the purchase price. If you're interested in these links, I'll put a link to them in the description below. And speaking of Capras, you may have remembered last week about the whole free Capras for all situation. Well... Oh, you almost had it. You gotta be quicker than that. It does look like most of those got intercepted as far as, you know, Horizon putting out recalls on those, trying to catch those before they got delivered to the end users. Now it does appear that several did get through that system, specifically more in California where they were on delivery much faster than probably Horizon was ready to react to. You know, some of those people were delivered within one day and I just don't think that, you know, the FedEx or whoever they were being delivered through was able to get, you know, these shipments recalled quickly enough to stop them from getting to the original buyer. So of course, 
$89 Capros were too good to be true. And Horizon went through a recall. They sent out emails to people with a little bit of a uh, explanation of what went on, you know, explaining that it was a glitch or however they actually worded it. And that what they would be doing is sending out a special offer to the people that placed the order. They didn't lead it all to what that special offer would be, whether it was gonna be, you know, a coupon code or whatever, don't know. But I'm sure that we'll start seeing those emails pop up once people do receive those emails. So, so if it's an interesting enough offer, I'm sure we'll circle back around on that story, discuss a little bit of what Horizon's plan is to try and smooth over the situation that was caused by obviously some incorrect clicks of the mouse. Last week, we speculated on the details of the new Red Cat Racing Gen 8 Axe Edition, and we saw the full details pop up in the following days. Now, last week, I was kind of guessing that this thing would be around that 519 range or something like that, and it came in a little bit cheaper, right at 499. Honestly, I think that that is a pretty solid price for what they're offering if you're looking for a Red Cat Gen 8. There are some updates that were made to the vehicle, including all metal gears in the transmission with the exception of the spur gear, which is to be expected. That's a nice upgrade being that it had plastic gears throughout the transmission in the previous version. They did take that ridiculous bump off of the skid plate finally. That thing should have never got through any sort of initial R&D in the first place. So, so seeing as that they finally got that removed is good to see. They also added some updates to the axle housings themselves to try and add some strength back in where things have been breaking commonly on Red Cat Gen 8 axles. Both in the plastics around the shock mounts and the axle housing itself, the portal boxes, as well as the upper portal gear and inner CVD shaft on the front axles. I will say that I hope they got those upgrades right because now they're going to sell this kit which didn't always have the best durability with a much higher power brushless system in it. So now you're really throwing it out there that this thing is made to handle much more power. The body on their Axe Edition does look much better in the topless form with the molded cage and it's got some nice interior details and it also comes with a you know, canvas style top to it that is attached with some screws and I believe some Velcro. That's been something that I've seen in the aftermarket for years and years and years, but never seen it available on a vehicle from the factory. So again, they're you know reaching out, doing some things that are new in the industry. First trail truck that I've ever seen that I can remember at least that's coming with a brushless system, at least with a censored brushless system at the very least. The canvas top's a pretty minor detail, but again, something that is new for the market. In the end, the most interesting thing will be to see whether or not that the people that are interested in a Red Cat Gen 8, if they want to spend $500 on it or not. Often the Gen 8 and some of the other Red Cat products have been popular because of their lower price point compared to many of the other vehicles that you're comparing it to or stacking it up against. So this is kind of stepping in a completely different direction and it's just going to be one of those things that we'll have to see how the market supports it. I think for me personally, if I was looking to purchase a Gen 8, I don't know if it's the direction that I would go, even though that I am a person who wants to put brushless and nice servos and things like that into my vehicle, but the Hobby Wing system isn't necessarily the system that I would choose. They're using it because it's the OEM manufacturer of most of the RTR vehicle ESCs that you see. Most of the ESCs that come in these vehicles are rebadged 1060 style ESCs. So they're likely able to get a very good deal because of the volume of the other motors and ESC systems that they're purchasing from Hobby Wing already. Drop your thoughts on it in the comments below. Definitely a good topic to discuss. But with that, we're kind of getting towards the end of the year again. This year seemed to absolutely fly by. There was a lot of stuff that came out this year. We had a really busy first half of the year, then a pretty slow summer. And now the holiday season is ramping up and we're starting to see quite a bit of movement in the market again. From some of the stuff I've heard, I think that there's still a chance that there's another decent release coming in December still. So if you guys have any guesses on that one, drop them below. Definitely the uh, speculations are always the best comments to figure out what people think is actually going to be released. It's usually way off base, but nonetheless fun to read. 
Over the next couple of weeks, I've got a bunch of stuff starting to fire up. In the early parts of 2020, the Sorka Scale Nationals is gonna be coming up in Las Vegas, and I plan to attend that, and I plan to compete in all three classes. And I'm gonna start a series up covering the builds of the three trucks that I'm going to take there. As of right now, I think only one of those trucks actually exists to show you. But as we go, I hope to have three finished rigs. And during that series, I'll also explain to the best of my ability what a class one, a class two, and a class three truck are. So if you're interested at all in Sorka rules or scale competition, might be something worth watching. And then something completely different for me, but something I've been talking about for a long time, I am going to finally start my no prep drag car. I've got a bunch of the parts here for that, gonna start assembling and tweaking and getting things ready and start doing a little bit of testing, just really starting to step my way into this whole different area of RC that I've never done before, but I am actually pretty excited about. So as always, I hope you guys have an awesome rest of the week. Tune in next week for the Scale News Update. Hit the like button if you enjoy these videos. Subscribe if you're not already. Hit the notification bell so you see the videos as soon as they get uploaded. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.